Hi, I'm Dr. James C. Murata, and I'm here to talk to you about the procedure called blepharoplasty. Blepharoplasty, or more commonly known as the eyelid lift, Um, you might have fullness in the upper eyelid. You might have excess skin or excess fat. Um, these potentially could be so bad that they might be weighing down or touching your eyelashes, giving you a heavy feeling, a tired look. Um, your eyes may seem more closed. Um, you, your eyes may appear smaller than you want them to be, kind of like my small eyes. <laughs> Um, women can have difficulty applying eyeshadow, so makeup can smear, and so that could be an issue. Or in, in severe cases, it even can obstruct vision, and particularly obstructs peripheral vision, so the upper outer portion of vision, and that can give people trouble with driving. What can be uh, the cause of this problem is really multifactorial. Most commonly is aging. As we age, our skin loses its ability to contract. Um, it, it becomes stretched out. Um, it's what we call elastosis. The little rubber band or elastic fibers in the skin have given way, and so we develop excess skin. It can be congenital, though. Uh, there are some people who just have very full upper eyelids, um, and that's as a result of genetics and birth. And Asian eyelids. Um, it, Asian eyelids typically are missing an attachment of the uh, orbital septum, which is a, a membrane in the eyelid, uh, to the eyelid's skin and muscle, which is present in Caucasian eyelids. So Asian eyelid surgery or double eyelid surgery is really used to kind of reverse that condition and give uh, people of Asian descent a double eyelid if they so desire. First we design the suture line. And the suture line is a very well concealed a uh, fine line which is hidden, in, uh, I design it usually at, right at the upper border of what's called the tarsal plate. So we all have a little piece of cartilage in our upper eyelid which forms the kind of structural component of it. And we usually have an adherent portion of the skin there which is a, creates a very fine line. And that defines when our eyes are open really where the junction of um, the eyelid is. So I, I hide that suture line right in there so that with open eyes you'll never be able to see it. The suture line does come out here a little bit to the side to kind of lift um, the lateral portion of the skin, the crow's feet region, and also the skin uh, that's hanging over on the sides of the eyelid. But again, it heals at such an imperceptible fine line that even men who don't wear many makeup can, um, can have that procedure and be assured they really won't see anything when it's done. So once the suture line is designed, the skin excess um, after uh, anesthesia, skin excess is removed a small strip of muscle, and then finally the orbital fat, uh, which can be excess, can either be removed, or in some instances we're now actually repositioning orbital fat to give more fullness to the brow or to um, give a, a more youthful contour to the lower eyelid. Sometimes the lacrimal gland or the tear gland can be protruding or hanging down, so that may be seed or kind of sutured up higher into the orbit so it doesn't create lateral fullness. Um, and then finally, uh, the suture line is closed with very fine sutures so that uh, healing is ideal. The procedure itself, upper blepharoplasty, takes me about an hour. Um, it can be done with local anesthesia. Um, so just giving you local anesthesia numbs the area. I typically will give people oral sedation. Or if people are, are nervous about that, um, they can uh, have IV sedation. <laughs> it's typically painless. People do not feel uh, um, any pain with upper eyelid surgery and typically the upper eyelids are slightly numb after the procedure which wears off. Uh, healing is rapid. Eyelid skin is thin so sutures come out in about three days um, and bruising and swelling is pretty minimal and for most patients it's gone about a week and most people can go back to work or school in about a week. Suture lines eventually fade completely um, in the beginning, they're um, slightly visible, become slightly red, and then fade by six weeks to three months, really to imperceptible uh, lines. There's other factors that can influence the outcome of, of upper blepharoplasty and other procedures you may want to consider at the same time, because obviously the upper eyelids are influenced by the surrounding structures. 
So uh, most importantly, the brow. The brow can also be drooping or totic. And so fullness of the upper eyelids can be caused by drooping of the brow. So you may want to consider a brow lift sometimes at the same time as upper blepharoplasty. You may have what's called ptosis. Uh, ptosis is another Greek word. It essentially means drooping of the eyelid itself, where the eyelid margin is resting on the colored part of the eye. You may or may not have ptosis if you have upper eyelid ex skin excess. Ptosis is again a problem that is can, cause, can be caused by aging or other factors. It's important to diagnose it um, and your surgeon should do a good job of that uh, prior to blepharoplasty surgery to make sure you don't have ptosis and you're going to require ptosis repair or another surgery at the same time as upper blepharoplasty. You want to look at IA symmetry because we really are, are put together quite differently on the left and the right side and eyes are never exactly symmetric so you want to know that ahead of time and make that consideration prior to having any kind of surgery. I'm a dual board certified facial plastic surgeon. I'm a specialist in eyelid surgery. Um, please feel free to visit the website and see our results at www.moradamd.com. Thank you for listening.